In today's society, racism has been normalized and passed as jokes or humor. It's not. Demeaning someone else's culture for a laugh isn't funny. Bullying, by definition, is the repeated act of harassing someone, and constantly making jokes about a culture is exactly that. As a young Indigenous person in this community, it is too often that my people are the butt end of jokes and racial stereotyping. It is something I've grown accustomed to, but I shouldn't have. I shouldn't be used to hearing comments about Aboriginal people being bad, and I shouldn't have to hold my breath every time I hear someone mention Indigenous people in fear of what they might say. We've all grown too comfortable with these derogatory remarks, and it's time to start holding each other accountable. I've heard sly comments about Indigenous people getting handouts from the government, people complaining about free healthcare and education. But did you know that our life expectancy is 10.6 years less in men and 9.5 years less in women? And did you know that an 18-year-old Indigenous male is more likely to end up incarcerated than to graduate year 12? So when we, as an at-risk minority, receive benefits, it's because we need them and it's because we are trying to improve these statistics. Many people make assumptions about the benefits Aboriginal people receive, especially hearing jokes about me or other Indigenous people getting free education. I don't. My parents pay my fees, just like any other student. For most of my life, I've not had access to many of these handouts, but still, people make assumptions about my family's financial stability. As an Indigenous person, I'm 15 times more likely to be incarcerated than someone who is not Indigenous, a statistic I was born into, as well as the statistics that tell me I'm less likely to graduate year 12. That is why there are so many scholarships and benefits available to try and close the gap between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Australians. Yesterday was National Closing the Gap Day, a, nat a national campaign to challenge and reduce the inequalities me and all Indigenous Australians face. The gap is evident and the statistics are so upsetting. As an Indigenous person, I was born into the world with the odds pinned against me and I'm constantly five steps behind everybody else. It's a stab in the heart when someone says, you're pretty smart for a black kid. For a black kid. How about for a person? It's a reminder of the gap that so evidently separates me from non-Indigenous people. Will my accomplishments continue to be belittled because of the racial prejudice that is held over my head? My whole life, I felt like I've had to work extra hard to prove that I'm more than a statistic. So when people joke and tell me that I'm the whitest black person they know because I try hard at school, it's a massive slap in the face. But what makes a black person white? Is it because I care about my education? Or because I'm well-mannered? People don't realise how much these jokes affect the Indigenous community and their identity. The jokes and stereotypes continue to knock us down when we are trying so hard to overcome the inequalities. They make it seem as though I'll never be as smart or capable as everyone else, just because I am Aboriginal. This constant reminder is so harmful to Indigenous youth. While I'm growing up and trying to figure out who I am, it feels like the whole world already has an idea of who I am. Based off of the colour of my skin, based off of ra racial prejudice and stereotypes. I'm working in overdrive to not only prove them wrong, but as an Indigenous leader in the school community, I'm trying to show my peers that the stereotypes don't define us and that they are wrong. <laughs> it's time to start holding your mates and yourself accountable. Constantly having our culture depicted as a joke has not only opened the door to racism, but it has desensitized us to another form of bullying. Thank you all for listening. I would now like to invite Talia up to the microphone to share her story.
told you can't do something is a phrase that contains hurt, pain, and makes everything that you've succeeded at seem like absolutely nothing. Being told that you can't do something because of your gender contains all of that and so much more. You can't do this because you're a girl. You'll never understand this because only men can do this. This is a form of bullying that has gone unnoticed because people have done it for generations. Why should how I look have anything to do with my knowledge and understanding of a topic? Throughout history, women have built themselves from the ground up, fighting and fighting until being given the right to vote in 1902, having the right to education in 1972, even having to fight for the right to own a house on our own in the 1700s. Yet now in 2021, we still can't even play sports without being told continuously we're not good enough, that we can't go into physical fields because women are weaker than men. I remember continuously being told I couldn't do something because of the fact that I'm a girl and me being too afraid to speak up, I would just stand there taking the punches. Boys using women as the butt end of jokes and expecting me to laugh along, which I did only because I felt like I had to pretend that everything was okay. Because people thought that I was laughing with them, that gave them the stamp of approval to turn these kinds of jokes into a routine. Even little things like how I did cooking in grade seven and people were saying how I'd be good at it because I'm used to being in the kitchen. Even in grade 10, where I started speaking my mind, only being told to shut it. Even last year, where someone joked that the only thing I'll be good at in life is being a wife. I would hear time and time and time again that I'll never be good enough because I'm just a girl. And then whenever I would get upset, I was told I was being overdramatic and that I can't take a joke. I still hear these comments. And the saddest part is that I'm not the only girl that's heard this and I can guarantee that. I shouldn't have to guarantee something like this, but I can. Your mother, your sister, your best friend, I can guarantee that they've heard these words and they will again. To everyone here today, please be aware of your words. You don't realize it, but by saying we can't do things because we're girls, you've already diminished any confidence that we ever had as women. We will remember your words whenever we feel like stepping out, only to retreat because it's better that way, or so we tell ourselves. Your words will forever remain with us because you probably weren't the first person to tell us that, and you probably won't be the last. And even if you didn't say it and your mate did, if you don't pull them up for it, you're just as much a part of the problem as they are. Imagine if they said that to someone that you care about, all of their work seemingly completely going to waste because of words that your mate could have just kept to themselves. Please do not let this behavior continue. Whenever we hear any degrading behavior, we need to be the ones to say no, to say that what they said was too far. If we hear this and allow it to happen, we are making it more and more difficult for the girls growing up in the future. I ask that today on Bullying No Way Day and from here on out, tomorrow, next week, next year and so forth, we all remain aware of our words and the true power they hold. Let's encourage each other and lift each other up so that we can all live in an equal society where being afraid to do things because of your gender is a thing of the past. Thank you.